During the Battle of Malmedy, the US forces captured a very strange looking tank. From a distance, it looked like an American M10 tank destroyer, but actually it was a modified German Panther tank. This vehicle was part of a greater German deception plan which aimed to achieve a quick victory in the Ardennes sector and change the outcome of the war. Otto Skorzeny was an Austrian-born officer in the Waffen-SS during World War II. During the war, he was involved in a number of special operations, including the Gran Sasso raid, which rescued the Italian dictator Benito Mussolini from captivity in September of 1943. Operation Greif, or Griffin, was another special operation commanded by Skorzeny during the Battle of the Bulge in late 1944. This operation was the brainchild of Adolf Hitler himself and its purpose was to capture one or more of the bridges over the Meuse River before they could be destroyed. German soldiers wearing captured US Army uniforms and using captured Allied vehicles were to cause confusion in the rear of the Allied lines. Part of this plan included the formation of the Panzerbrigade or Armored Brigade 150, a special unit formed from all branches of the German armed forces. Originally, the requests were made for 15 tanks, 20 armored cars, 100 jeeps, 40 motorcycles, and 120 US trucks, along with 3,000 English-speaking German soldiers and enough American weapons and uniforms to outfit them all. However, almost immediately problems arose during the planning stage. First, Skorzeny had only five or six weeks to plan the operation, which limited his available forces and material considerably. Second, of the 3,000 men requested, only 2,500 men could be provided. Of that number, less than 10 of them could convincingly speak English, the majority having only basic education in English through primary school classes, which they spoke with German accent and with no knowledge of American slang. Finally, there were numerous problems with the equipment as well. Attacks on German rail lines meant that most of the requested equipment would be delayed until well past the deadline for the start of the operation, which greatly limited available supply of Allied material. Of the 15 tanks requested, only two Shermans in poor condition could be found in time, and far fewer numbers of armored cars, jeeps and trucks were sent to the brigade that the plan had originally called for. So Skorzeny had to improvise. One of the ways which the Germans made up for the lack of suitable Allied tanks was to disguise Panther tanks as US M10 tanks destroyers by removing their tall commander's cupolas with a flat two-piece hatch, applying sheet of thin angled metal to their hulls and turrets, painting them OD green and giving them US military identification marks. These tanks were called Ersatz M10 or Substitute M10 and were intended to look convincing from a distance, allowing them to get in close and strike Allied targets before they could react. 
the Germans planned to get around the inevitable problem of friendly fire by having their tank signals their true identities to friendly forces in a number of ways. These included keeping their guns aimed in the 9 o'clock position, the commanders and crew wearing colored scarves or removing their helmets, and identifying markers on the tanks themselves such as a layout triangle and flashing blue or red torchlights for the identification at night. Performance-wise, the Ersatz M10 had the standard Panther's high-power 75mm gun with the armor layout of a G version. It had a steel structure around the base armor that transforms the outside look into a mimicry of the American M10. Investigation on four German Panther tanks knocked out in the Malmedy area in late December around Belgium revealed that the tanks were carefully and cleverly disguised as US M10 gun motor carriages. After expecting the tanks and realizing the amount of time, work and materials involved in order to imitate the appearance of the M10, US intelligence officers expressed the opinion that these disguised tanks used in the proper tactical situation and at the proper time would have caused considerable damage. Inside one tank which was blown up too badly to be inspected were found items of US clothing such as a helmet, overcoat and leggings. To heighten the deception, US stars were painted on both sides and also on the top of the turret and US unit markings were painted on the false bow and rear. To accomplish the deceptive modifications which pointed to at least four or fifth echelon alternations, the work probably was done by maintenance units rather than at a factory. The work probably was divided into four sections – turret, bow, rear and sides. The turret was disguised by using five pieces of sheet metal, two of which were cut to resemble the distinctive sides of the M10 turret and then were flanged on the edges, bent to shape and stiffened with small angle iron. The gun shield was carefully formed from another sheet to the extent shape of the M10 shield and a hole was made to the right of the gun hole in the shield for the coaxial MG34, a hole which does not exist in the M10 shield. The force gun shield was attached to the Panther gun shield and all of the lifting rings, brackets, extra armor studs, etc. found on the M10 turret were carefully duplicated and welded on the force turret. Approximately four pieces of sheet metal shaped to imitate as closely as possible the contours of the M10 bow made up the false bow necessary because the Panther's bow is bulkier than the M10. The false bottom was shaped to give the characteristic appearance of the front drive sprocket housing of the M10 and the top was shaped carefully and various component pieces attached to the front of the tank. A square opening was cut in the false bow to permit the use of the bow MG34 but a removable cover attached with a small chain was made for this opening. And finally, the false rear was made of metal sheet. It was a faithful duplicate of the M10 rear except for two holes 
to permit the twin exhaust elbows of the Panther to protrude. An attempt was made to imitate the skirting armor of the M10, which appears to hang lower than the side armor of the Panther. Despite these numerous problems with the material and manpower, Operation Greif would proceed as scheduled on the 16th of December 1944. The initial plan for the Ersatz M tanks along with the rest of Panzerbrigade 150 was to advance behind the 1st SS Panzer Corps until they reached the high fence, a heavily forested plateau. At that point, they would move around the division and split into three units, with the aim of going behind enemy lines and attacking and holding the bridges over the Meuse River before they could be destroyed by the Allies to hold the German advance. However, the Panzerbrigade 150 Operation Griff effectively ended before it even started. Massive traffic jams had formed during the initial stages of the battle, holding up the entire German offensive. Among these, the Panzerbrigade was delayed and did not arrive in the assembly area for over two days. Skorzeny realized that he no longer had the time required to complete his objectives and rather than continue with the doomed plan, he requested that his forces be used as a regular fighting force and used to take the town of Malmedy. After several attempts to take the town, the brigade was repelled by American forces and suffered heavy losses from American artillery strikes. Skorzeny was one of the battle's casualties, wounded by shrapnel from an artillery shell. One American soldier, Private Francis Curry of the 120th Infantry Division, would later receive the Congressional Medal of Honor for knocking out four of the tanks with bazooka fire and anti-tank grenades, including at least one of these disguised Panthers, rescuing five of his comrades in the process. This would be the Germans' only attempt at taking the town, and Panzerbrigade 150 would later be relieved, disbanded and replaced by the 18th Volksgrenadier Division in late December. Despite Panzerbrigade 100's fifth failure to achieve its objectives, the overall objective of Unternehmen Greif succeeded to a limited degree. Paranoia among Allied troops led to numerous friendly fire incidents and false information by a captured commando of a plot to assassinate Supreme Allied Commander Eisenhower in Paris led to his brief confinement. Ultimately, however, this confusion and paranoia had little overall effect on the battle. Numerous damaged and abandoned Ersatz m tanks were captured after the Battle of Malmedy and they were evaluated by Allied intelligence. No records of what happened to these disguised tanks are available though it can be reasonably assumed that the tanks were scrapped after their evaluations by the Allies and no examples are known to have survived to the present day. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.